Everybody pull on the desk. What page? The periodic table. Everybody get a textbook. Yes. All right, so today we have groups 3A through 6A, this little block here. Now, what's important about this, and the reason I saved this for last, is that they're colored kind of diagonally here, and yet we know that the ones that are in the same vertical column also have something in common. So what you're getting out of this is, look at group four, right? Group four, carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead, must all have something in common, because that's why we line them up that way. But at the same time, we know that the yellow ones should have something in common, the green ones should have something in common with each other, and so should the blue ones. Which means I gotta teach sort of two separate lessons. So what I'm gonna teach today is, I'm gonna do the yellow ones, which are the poor metals or other metals, whatever they're called, the green ones and the light blue ones separately, and talk about their physical properties. Because each of these groups shares physical properties. That's why they're colored the same color. Then I'm going to talk about them as vertical columns, three, four, five, and six, and talk about chemical properties. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. And if it didn't make sense, hopefully it'll make sense when I do it. So this is 13 through 16, or you could write 3A through 6A. Either one's fine. Okay, and uh, let's start off with the poor metal, or actually this periodic table calls them other metals, so let's stick with other metals. Maybe I'll just give you both. So that's the yellow ones. Make sure you know which groups we're talking about. So these are the light yellow ones under the staircase. And I'm gonna give you physical properties. my stuff. Um, oh, let me list these for you too. So what are they? They're aluminum, gallium, uh, indium, iron, tin is SN for some reason, gallium is TL, I'm not sure I'm doing this right. Indium, gallium, yeah. Uh, we got lead, which is PB. And bismuth, which is BI. A lot of these got symbols that have nothing to do with their names. All right, so this is the group we're talking about. These are the poor metals, or sometimes called the other metals. Uh, yeah, let's do, uh, I already did dashes, let's do triangles. They have lower melting points. transition metals. I feel like my writing is getting worse as it goes on. Alright, lower melting points and then the other thing and this one you kind of already know, conduct heat and electricity. I say you already know it because they're metals. Metals conduct heat electricity, right? It's part of the definition. Okay, so depending on which periodic table you use, they may group them slightly different. Okay. Not everybody agrees on which ones are the metalloids. So I'm going to put polonium in with the metalloids. Okay. This periodic table has them in with the uh, four metals. All right, that's it for this group. Uh, metalloids are going to be next, so that's the one we're doing. So metalloids are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, uh, antimony, which is, what is antimony? Is it even in the name? 
Uh, no, it's not. Just pee. And tellurium, PE, and polonium, which I said I'm going to have in this group. And again, your book puts astatine in with the metalloids. Then I wrote this last in the periodic table. I was using his, uh, astatine as a non-metal. So we're just going to leave it there. Huh? PO. Polonium. All right. So physical properties again. And again, I hope everybody's getting, I'm not doing chemical properties here. I'm going to go back and reorganize them into columns when I do chemical properties. All right, physical properties. So metalloid, anytime you hear OID at the end of a word, that means it's kind of like that thing, right? So metalloid is kind of like a metal. So what do you think one of the properties might be? Isn't PO uh, an other metal? Yes, I just said that twice. Yeah. So I'm putting PO in this group. Because depending on which periodic table you use, you know, they may put them in with metalloids or non metal. They're kind of like, you know, it's like if you're on the border of a country, you have some kind of some of the food from the other country, like that. They kind of have properties that are similar if they're close to each other in the periodic table. Okay, so metalloids, kind of like metals. So what do you think the properties might be? What do we know about metals? Yeah, they're hard. Yeah, I mean, you know, so it's glass, you know. Uh, metals conduct heat and electricity usually, right? Yep. So for metalloids, what are we going to write? We're going to write conduct heat and electricity sometimes. So I want you to be able to remember this, that's why I'm bringing this up. When we talk about non-metals, you should say things that don't conduct heat and electricity. Anytime we talk about metals, you should think things that do conduct heat and electricity. Metalloids, sometimes they act like metals, sometimes they don't. Now what do I mean? It's not like they're, you know, they're metals on Tuesday, not metals on Wednesday. What I mean is that they act differently depending on temperature, pressure, things like that. Like some of them, if you make them very, very cold, they become great conductors of electricity, superconductors. But then if you make them room temperature, suddenly the electrical resistance is very, very high and they don't conduct electricity. So it really depends on temperature and those kind of conditions, whether or not they're going to act like a metal or not. And that's the only property I'm going to give you for metalloids. So let's go on to the next group. Uh, let's do non-metals. All right, and for these we're going to do carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and selenium. And then, of course, the halogens and the noble gases are also nonmetals, but I'm not going to do them because we already covered them in other lessons. All right, so nonmetals, uh, we're going to do physical, what would I do? I did pluses for the category and dashes for physical properties. All right. Somebody tell me what I'm going to write here. Do not conduct heat and electricity. Oops. Do not conduct. Well, everything <coughs> conducts some electricity or some heat, but they're not good conductors of heat electricity. Okay, um, what else do you think of when you think of metals? Metals are shiny usually, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Non-metals are dull. Uh, that graphite that's in your pencil that people keep mistakenly calling lead, that's carbon, right? You look at the lead, the brain, or the I just call it lead. If you look at the graphite, it's very um, dull, it's boring, if you break it up into a powder. It's also brittle, right? It doesn't bend. It's brittle. So that's another uh, property for these non-metals. Metals are usually stretchy, they're usually bendable, they don't tend to break very easily. Uh, non-metals tend to be brittle. And again, brittle you should think of as glass, right? Glass and shatters. It doesn't bend. You can't bend glass. You can't twist it. You can't draw it into a wire. Uh, what else? Lower densities than metals. I'm going to write it. Let's so put low densities. 
These, um, some of these are the lowest densities, right? Because what do we know about nitrogen and oxygen? They're gases at room temperature, right? Yeah. So is, uh, and then some of the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, and the double gases. So obviously that's a very low density if they're gas. Uh, and then also, if they're gases at room temperature, some of them are, uh, low melting points. What's important about nitrogen? Do you know? Yeah, if it's liquid, it would be very cold and we use it to freeze stuff. What else is important about it? Yeah, we're breathing it right now, right? 78% of what we're breathing is nitrogen, 21% oxygen. So most of what we're breathing is nitrogen. All right, that's it for that group. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and reshuffle these categories, and I'm going to do them by vertical columns. So we're going to do, uh, what was I using? Plus sign, group 3A, or group 13 if you prefer. So we're going through the same elements again, this time we're dividing them up by column. Uh, so group 3A is, let me write it down, is it boron, aluminum, germanium, and no, I'm sorry, don't write your name, gallium. And what's the other two? Uh, Indium. Tellurium? Yeah. Is that TL? Yep, yeah. Okay. What is it? Lead, and, lead is uh, group four. I'm doing by column now. So just group three, only that, that, uh, that vertical column. And now we're going to do chemical properties. There's only one thing I want to give you for this group. What's that? The, huh? What is it? Anybody? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're starting with an S. Right. What? Right. It starts with S. Yep. Nope. Okay. See what? Huh? They burn. They burn. They burn. They burn. You know. Oh come on! What's the first one I was going to get? Put the letter. You get it. Three. Electrons. <laughs> Come on, the one thing I care the most about, valence electrons. So group 3A, they have three valence electrons. And that's all I'm going to give you for this group because it's not very interesting. Let's do group 4. Carbon. Carbon, silicon, radio, SN. Yeah. And lead, right? You. There we go. Okay, is this group four or fourteen? Chemical properties. This one has. What is this one? Four valence. Yes, they have four valence like four. Four. I hope you guys are getting that, you know, the valence electrons are important. Like if you leave this class and you remember nothing else but how many valence electrons are in each element and, you know, what things react with what, then that's pretty much, you know, like half the class. Now. Which, when I say what reacts with what, I really mean left side of the periodic table reacts with right side of the periodic table, generally speaking. Except for the last row, 18, right? They don't react with anything. All right. So here we go. Uh, usually... Form four covalent bonds. Okay, we haven't talked at all about covalent bonds yet. Uh, basically, it's electrons that are shared between two atoms that stick them together. We'll get into that later on. Uh, carbon, especially, carbon especially, uh, does this a lot. Now we're going to spend like an entire month or two at the end of the year talking about carbon, so you'll get to know carbon really well, and this will come up. Uh, ions, sometimes they ionize, so carbon, right, could be minus four, you can put minus four or plus four, carbon, cavity, <laughs> cavity, okay, so carbon can be minus four or plus four, we tend to see both uh, silicone and 
I'm just going to write the symbols. I'm getting lazy. Germanium, uh, oftentimes plus four charges. Uh, these things aren't extremely reactive, and they don't always ionize. But if they do, this is what we usually see. And for the others, which would be lead and tin, we actually tend to see plus two charges most of the time. And lead can have a couple charges, like tin also. Uh, so it's not always the same with all of these. You don't need to remember all those, but I just wanted to say that. All right. Let's go on to group 15 or 5. Thank you. 5A or 15. All right, so this is nitrogen, phosphorus, phosphorus arsenic. Eric Arsenic. Uh, SB. Uh, antimony? Yep. And BI. <laughs> I have a story about arsenic, but I don't know if you really want to hear it. Yeah, Go ahead, just say it. Is it about a rat? Or what? No, it's about <laughs> chickens, actually. Uh, you guys really want to hear it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, about one, that? one time I was um, listening to this uh, story on um, NPR, you know, the news station, yeah. which I don't listen to all the time. But anyway, I was listening to it. It was about poisons. And they said that, uh, you know, we all have a little bit of arsenic in our diet, like tiny, tiny amounts, right? Very, very little. And so, you know, it doesn't really hurt us because it's too little to kill you, obviously. Uh, and so they decided to do an experiment. They took these chickens and they removed all the arsenic from their diet. The little bit that there is, they chemically removed all the arsenic. So it was completely free of arsenic. And guess what happened? They, they died. died. All the chickens died. So it's possible that we need tiny, tiny amounts. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we don't. Tiny amounts of poison? Yeah. Obviously, you know, a teaspoon or whatever yeah. would kill you, but, you know, tiny traces. Who's the size of the food below? Huh? I don't know what you said. All right, let's have a moment here. Chemical properties. What am I going to write? Five valence electrons. Five valence electrons. I don't know. That's a good question. Um... Usually form double or triple bonds or triple covalent bonds. Okay, so like I said, we haven't talked about this a lot, but in a chemical reaction, basically, if things are going to come together, two things can happen. Either one can, they can ionize, where one gives the other one electrons, and then you have negative and positive or attracted to each other, and that's called an ionic bond. Or you can have them share electrons, which is called a covalent bond. So one of those two things happen. We'll get into that a lot later on, but that's why I'm mentioning this stuff. All right. Uh, some are poisonous. I figured I'd throw that in there because it's interesting. Um, actually, some of the other ones are too, which we hadn't done in the last group. All right, last group, 6A. You guys are all caught up there. I should have asked before I erased that. All right, 6A. Oxygen. Yes, yeah, so the oxygen group. What else? Uh, Sulfur. 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 Alright, there we go. Uh, this is a dash note, yeah. And then we're going phosphor chemical properties. Alright, I got this. Six. That is electric. That's the next one too, right? Yeah. And usually four one two one three. Are you serious? Yeah. Double, double bonds. Double covalent bonds. Uh four ions with a negative two charge, either one. Uh so let's just put four Anions, those are the minus ones, right? Anions with negative two charge. Hmm. I 
That's it. We have done the periodic table. Woo! Woo-hoo! Good time. So, tomorrow I will give you a practice test. Oh, I'll give you a